Hi guys, I'm here with the Bedini motor and I got the wise idea of putting one of these um, RC uh, remote control type uh, load meters on here. I bought this I think uh, a while back with the idea of putting it in with the solar panels in line with the solar panels. But although it claims to be 150 amp, there's no way with those thin wires that you're running 150 amps through that thing. Um, for example, to a power inverter or whatever. It's just isn't going to, the power inverter won't be able to draw. So um, for me, it doesn't work for what I bought it for. But I can use it with the little Harbor Freight solar panel sets and for the Bedini motor, which is now running. And I'm going to conduct a little experiment. I'm going to, uh, we. First of all, let's see, just running normal, what we have here. It's It fluctuates a lot, so with digital meters, it's very, very hard to get a reading. But we're averaging, I don't know, it's hard to say, averaging, I'd say, 100 milliamps, 0.1 amp. And it looks like averaging one watt, okay? So it drops and it rises, whatever. But it looks like we're averaging one watt of input power. So keep an eye on that for a minute. Everybody keep your eye on that and analyze that for a minute because I'm going to then put the LED lamps back in series with the battery. And we're gonna come back and look at how much power is being used by the system. Oh, by the way, I think um, yeah, I forgot. I wanted to do an RPM test as well. I'm going to have to put a silver stripe on there and do an RPM test. So I'm going to shut the system down, put the silver stripe on the, um, on the wheel, and then I'll get my, my, um, uh, tachometer, I think you call it, whatever you want to call it. It's a digital, um, tachometer. And we'll check the speed of that running normally. And then we'll do a test with amps, watts, and um, charging output. I'm now at 15 volts, but that's just under charge. And also speed of the motor. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay guys, um, first of all over here. Oops, I gotta adjust. I forgot to adjust the wheel. Bring down the current. I don't see much change in current. It sometimes jumps up to a two. Uh, now that I turned down the um, resistance, the current jumped up. I should have left it. We're still averaging around a watt, 0 0.6 to 1.1, 1 .1, 0.8, 1.31. It jumps around a lot, all right? Looks like we're averaging around a watt. It's really hard to say because it's really jumping around, okay? Um, under 100 milliamps on average, right? Now, I took a capacitor, 50 volt, 22 microfarad, uh, microfarad. The one wire is not connected right now, he's just resting in here. The LEDs are blinking happily, and when I push it in, now look at the incandescent lights. Watch the LEDs and the incandescents when I push this bulb in. The incandescents are very, very dim right now, but watch. The incandescents get brighter. The LEDs are still on, Wait a minute, now they, they, a minute ago they were on. Now they go out. But the incandescents get brighter. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, let me turn up the, uh, I'm gonna adjust the resistance up a tiny bit, or down I should say. Um, no that's odd, maybe it's the camera. I didn't have the camera on when I was doing this, and the LEDs were still glowing. It's very weird. Anyway, the LEDs were glowing, but the uh, incandescents get brighter. There's two incandescents right here, and when I put the capacitor in, the incandescent lights get brighter. Not much, but they get brighter. I don't know if you can see it. So that's odd. I don't know uh, what that means. That's an electrolytic uh, 50 volt, 22 microfarad capacitor. I, like I said, it's just resting there. When I push it down, it makes contact. 
So I'm also going to try a capacitor in uh, series with this system and see what happens. But um, the voltage is already really high, so the charging voltage, although it went up some, is not as perceptible because I've been charging this battery for a long time now. Um, I should, I guess I could swap it out with a lower charge battery and then you see a, a very perceptible swing. But you did see that before. You saw the voltage go up before, so I don't have to cover that. Now I've got the input power. I can turn this back and reduce the uh, input current being used. So now I'm showing input current. So, and watts. You can definitely see power, input power, all right? Um, I thought it was dropping, but I guess it's not really changing much at all, if anything. But I do have free light with this system. So I'm going to put the capacitor in series and come back and see what happens. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, I can only do this for a second. Watch that voltage. Watch this when I put the, touch this here. Watch that voltage. Pegs out. I'm also overloading my transistor when that light, neon light glows. Um, the lights are glowing dimly. I'm pegging out. I don't know what's going on here, guys, but it tremendously, like, hugely, hugely, hugely increased the power, the voltage, the power output. Screaming high. Look at that. Wow. I can't, I can't leave it on because I'll blow up my system. I, I'm afraid to blow up the battery. I have no idea, no idea, but that's definitely an amplification of voltage putting a capacitor in there. That's a crazy, crazy increase in voltage. Um, I've got to get myself a proper oscilloscope. All I have is a little toy thing, which I'll show you one day, but that's madness. You guys saw that, right? It just pegs that 20 volt um, scale on there. Wow. So, um, anyway, by the way, my voltage isn't reading correct because I don't have the output meter now hooked up directly to the, um, at this moment, when I hooked up the lights, I'm no longer measuring, I don't know what I'm measuring, to be honest, um, because I've got all the circuits in between the output of this and the battery. That's crazy that pegs up. Wow. Okay, now the... It's running too slow. Wow. Okay, I'm, I got something weird going on here, guys. Massive high output voltage by adding that capacitor in series with all the LEDs. I'm going to take the capacitor out of the circuit or the LEDs out of the circuit and see what happens. Okay guys, there's no power connected to the wheel. I just gave it a spin. I'm one-handed here on the camera so I, uh, I can't really show you what I'm doing. This is crazy. Now don't forget, that's reading the output of the Bedini motor um, before it goes through the capacitor to the battery, okay? So I'm reading the output of the Bedini motor, not the battery voltage. Well, I'm just going to touch this because I don't want to blow my transistors. Oh, it's moving too slow. i got to give the wheel a spin. Alright, now when I touch that, it's going to peg that meter. Look at that. I'm going to have to get a higher voltage. I'm going to have to get a digital multimeter on there see what we got that's crazy although I don't know what range to put it on I don't want to blow out a, a, a multimeter why would that do that adding a tiny little capacitor I'm afraid I might blow up the capacitor because what I'm doing is over voltaging that little capacitor um, no idea how many volts uh, is going in the system so all right I'm gonna get a digital multimeter on the battery and I'm going to get a digital multimeter on the output. See what's going on here. Okay, guys, the output of the Bedini motor is 8.2 something or other, 8.3 volts. 
I don't know why it's fluctuating. That's the problem with digital meters on the Bedini motor. It fluctuates. You're talking about pulsing stuff. We're at 12.17. It's got quite a glare. 12.17 volts on the um, battery itself. Now I'm going to give the wheel a spin up. There's no power applied to the circuit yet. But when I apply a power to the circuit, let's see what this voltage does. Seven, 67 volts on the output of the Bedini. And the uh, battery doesn't really do anything. No, it doesn't do anything. Let me speed that up some more, it's too slow. Um, battery isn't doing anything. I can only hold this for a few seconds. I don't want to blow up my transistor because it's too much power. When that neon glows, then you're risking blowing up your transistor. So 67 volts are coming off that. I don't know why, but it pegs that meter. Um, very odd. I have no idea what I'm seeing here, and I have no idea what I can do with it. Why I'm seeing 67 volts come off that output by just adding a tiny little capacitor. Now for comparison, I'll bypass the capacitor, all right? We'll put the output of the Bedini, I'm just going to take this off and put it on the other leg of the capacitor. So the output of the Bedini motor goes straight to the battery. Now I'm reading the same voltage here and here, all right? Now, let's give that a good spin again. Okay, hook up power, and everything will be good and happy. Okay. Um, i got to speed it up. Alright, now that'll come on up to normal speed. The battery charging voltage is going to go up when everything's good and happy. Now the output of the Bedini motor is directly connected to the output of the battery, so both meters are reading the same. Just by putting a tiny little capacitor in there, I'm hitting 67 volts. I wonder if I put a higher voltage capacitor Here's an 80 microfarad, 300 volt capacitor. I wonder if I'll get 300 volt spikes. This is a photo flash capacitor, 300 volts. Let's see what happens. Um, I don't want to blow up my Bedini motor. It's old faithful here. But I'm going to disconnect the power. I'm going to put that capacitor in there and see what happens. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to give the Bedini a spin up so it run, it's running. Now, this is scary. I hope I don't blow this thing up because I, I might see 300 volt spikes in it. Um, is it the same? 70. It's going up. Look. Oh, but I'm really, really blowing my... See that neon lighting up? Brightly. That means I'm getting way, way, way too much power. I turn a transistor sensitivity. More resistance. Okay, I'm getting way too much power. Okay, it's, it's just hitting still 70 volts. Same thing. Sixty volts, but my meter, my uh, Bedini isn't spinning as fast. All right, let me give it a good spin up. Okay. Okay, I got 70, 80 volts, but I'm really got way, way, way too much power coming through here. I don't want to blow up my transistor. 70 volts. I don't get it. I don't get it guys, what's going on here? Something's weird. This is definitely not a one-to-one -one transformer as some people make the claim. So now I guess what I'm seeing is the, um, the, uh, well, I don't know what I'm seeing right there. Well, I have had schooling in electronics, but this, um, you have to throw conventional electronics out the door when you start playing with this stuff. There is energy in the environment around us. 
and I don't care what all you engineers say and rant and rave, there's something weird going on here. And there is energy entering the system from the atmosphere, or whatever you call it. I don't care if you want to call it static or back EMF. I don't care what you call it, there's energy entering the system. And that capacitor amplifies it to a very scary level. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with that. I don't want to blow up my system. And it's obviously too much energy. Because um, when that neon light lights up, that's actually um, dumping the excess energy. Okay? So when that lights up, you have hundreds of volts. I think that's a hundred volt neon light. So, well, actually, I don't know. I have to look it up. But on the on the um, on the collector, I don't want to lie. I don't remember the rating on that anymore. But when that neon light lights up, you've got extra excess energy that's being dumped through the neon to protect the transistor from burning up, which I've done often. Believe me, I've blown up a lot of transistors on this. That's why I'm very nervous about doing this experiment. I think I'm going to put together another Benini motor and experiment with it and blow up some parts. Uh, see what we can get out of it, because this is a very curious experiment. Alright guys, Melanie's calling for dinner, so gotta go. Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Oh.